Hey, you should have an ad blocker so YouTube doesn't give you bullshit. If you want to contribute to my work, I have a Ko-Fi page linked in the description where you can offer a one-time donation or donate monthly. I put a lot of time into my videos, so I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Toxology. Linux, in all its glory, has not exactly been a household name. Before Linux really had a mascot, the few people that knew about Linux were experts and used it every single day. However, as Linux blossomed in reach, so too did its image. Unfortunately, whenever the word Linux came up, the unwashed masses did and still imagine a sweaty, shiny neckbeard holed up in his mom's basement, toiling away at a dusty computer. Obviously, as time went on, Linux needed its own image. This is when Linus Torvalds, creator of the Linux kernel, started probing for a mascot that embodied his creation. There is dissent as to where exactly the inspiration for a penguin mascot came from. One story is that on a trip to speak to the Australian Unix users group in 1993, Torvalds was allegedly bitten by a blue penguin. However, another recounting of similar events states that Torvalds was bitten by a penguin at the National Zoo and Aquarium in Canberra, Australia. In a book written by Torvalds and an author named David Diamond, titled Just For Fun, The Story of an Accidental Revolutionary, further pretext is given as to how a penguin mascot came to be, describing how it happened from the perspective of both Torvalds and his wife, Tove Torvalds. The penguin was my idea, says Tove. Linus was trying to find a symbol for Linux because people were asking, shouldn't there be a symbol? He was thinking of things he'd seen. He said he would like to have something nice, something sympathetic. I thought about penguins. Linus had been bitten by a fairy penguin at a zoo in Australia. He likes to pet things. He's always poking at stuff like rattlesnakes. Those penguins at the zoo were about one foot high and he just reached into the cage to pet one of them. He kind of played with his fingers as if they were fish. The penguin came at him, bit him, noticed he was not a fish. He got bitten by a penguin, but he liked it anyway. I got the feeling he was sold on penguins after that. He wanted to see penguins wherever it was possible. So when he started looking for a symbol, I said, why don't you have a penguin because you fell in love with those penguins? He said, okay, I'll think about it. The story, according to Linus, is that while Tove may in fact have vaguely mentioned penguins at some early stage, it was in a conversation with two high-ranking Linux types that the icy creatures were first seriously considered as the operating system's official mascot. Tove has her take on this version. He thought it wasn't a good idea after all, because it was my idea. He went on thinking about a possible symbol. Then we were in Boston with Mad Dog and Henry Hall. They started talking about the symbol. I said to them, what about a penguin? Do you think it's nice? They said yes. I think that made Linus think it might be a good idea after all. Henry Hall said he knew an artist who could draw it for him, but that never happened. The next thing I knew, Linus had asked on the internet if there were people who wanted to send in pictures of penguins. He chose a version by Larry Ewing, a graphic artist who works at the Institute for Scientific Computing at Texas A&M University. Starting in 1996, mounting discussions concerning a logo for Linux began to sprout on the Linux kernel mailing list. On May 1st, 1996, a post entitled Linux Logo was written by Matt Hartley. In the post, he references an image titled Lin64. Upon further research, this seems to be the image in question. Replies from other devs began to flood in, asking for artists to illustrate other logo concepts. These concepts entailed Linux in the form of a penguin triumphing over BSD in Windows. However, there were concerns over bad publicity and a penguin mascot being too similar to that of new mega technologies. A post from Alan Cox, frequently dubbed as Linus's second-in-command, reads, Does anyone with a fireproof vest and a good drawing hand want to try a picture of the BSD Damon flat out on the floor with stars around its head and a penguin in boxing gloves standing on top? Alan. On the same day, Hartley replies excitedly, saying, If I could draw, that would be my number one choice for a drawing. What a great idea! Maybe we could have the penguin kicking the BSD Damon in the side. I think the logo project is pretty important for the Linux publicity project, and this kind of drawing would bring in some major publicity. Someone with some free time and some artistic talent want to tackle this one? 
Who knows, it could end up on every major CD distribution as well. Andrew Esch replies guardedly, saying, Uh, before everyone goes too far with the penguin idea, I should point out that a penguin is the advertising mascot of New Mega Technologies Inc., which makes protected mode debuggers and code scanners. Even if they have no legal control of the image of a penguin, we may wish to distance ourselves, market identification-wise, from any Windows product. They might mistake Linux for a new mega product. Eventually, four days later, Torvalds chipped in, corroborating with Steve Ulrich about the taboo nature of a logo purposefully made to demean BSD, despite finding it funny himself. I have to agree, Alan's logo would be kinda funny, but not really done in the best taste. Torvalds then discloses his favorite penguin picture and outlines the rationale for what kind of attitude he wants in a Linux mascot. Now you hopefully all know I like penguins, so I finally copied my favorite penguin picture to the FTP site, where it now sits in pub slash software slash Linux slash kernel slash v1.3 along with all the kernels. I have no idea of the copyright status of that picture. I found it on another FTP site. And if you're running X, you should add this line to your X in RC. Now, due to copyrights, we can't use this as the Linux logo, but think of this penguin as THE killer penguin, and you'll be in the right frame of mind for doing a real Linux logo. This is a penguin with an attitude. I don't know exactly what the attitude is, but it's definitely there. Linus. Following these discussions between devs in separate forms, along with an initial suggestion and alleged crude drawing made by Alan Cox, Torvalds commented on a prototype made by Dale Sheets, based on the idea of a penguin holding a globe. He pontificated on what he believes to be the true visage of a Linux mascot once again. Somebody had a logo competition announcement, maybe people can send their ideas to a website. Anyway, this one looks like the poor penguin is not really strong enough to hold up the world, and it's going to get squashed. Not a good positive logo in that respect. Now, when you think about penguins, first take a deep calming breath, and then think cuddly. Take another breath and think cute. Go back to cuddly for a while, and then think contented. With me so far? Good. Now with penguins, Contented means it either just gotten laid or it's stuffed on a herring. Take it from me, I'm an expert on penguins. Those are really the only two options. Now, working on that angle, we don't really want to be associated with a randy penguin, so we should be looking at the stuffed to its brim with herring angle here. So when you think penguin, you should be imagining a slightly overweight penguin sitting down after having gorged itself and having just burped. It's sitting there with a beatific smile. The world is a good place to be when you have just eaten a few gallons of raw fish and you can feel another burp coming. Now, if you have problems associating yourself with something that gets off by eating raw fish, think chocolate or something, but you get the idea. Okay, so we should be thinking of a lovable, cuddly, stuffed penguin sitting down after having gorged itself on herring. Still with me? Now comes the hard part. With this image firmly etched on your eyeballs, you then sketch a stylized version of it. Not a lot of detail, just a black brush type outline that requires talent. Give people the outline and they should say, Ooh, what a cuddly penguin. I bet he is just stuffed with herring. And small children will jump up and down and scream, Mommy, mommy, can I have one too? Following a Linux logo contest, Larry E. Wing created the tux that we know and love today. E-Wing created Tux using GIMP version 0.54. Tux has gone through many iterations in an attempt to modernize and simplify his image. Purportedly used between 2005 to 2008, this version of Tux presents a balloon-like, compact frame, feigning a slightly crazed, if not eccentric aura. The light catches his body as though he were made of shiny black tar. This version, alleged to have been used since 2008, presents an equally glossy look, with a small emphasis on contour and shape, especially around his eyes and arms. He seems to have gained an iota of sanity and appears docile, in a way. 
These three incarnations, especially the latter and the first, have been circulating around the internet in varying forms. These forms include tuxes that were made specially for distributions of Linux. This iteration of Tux is used to represent the Linux distribution Slackware. He has a pipe hanging out of his mouth. While random to many, this symbology actually tracks with Slackware's namesake, that being the Church of the Subgenius. The Church of the Subgenius is a parody religion that revolves around a fictional man who goes by the name of J.R. Dobbs. This character is depicted with a pipe. The church also frequently cites and seeks to attain an intangible ability called slack. Obviously, the slack in slackware, as well as the formatting of subgenius and slackware are clear signs of inspiration. A famous earlier appearance of Tux is during the boot sequence on Gentoo, displaying a number of Tuxes equal to the amount of threads on your system. Tux has also appeared in his very own line of video games in various miscellaneous programs. In 2000, Tux Racer was released, featuring Tux sliding down a snowy mountain. A native Linux game called Extreme Tux Racer. This is a very, very cool game. You can just download it from the Synaptic. I just go on uh, the classics since I sort of remember them, you know, not a lot. But I do. Because I used to play this game like ages ago. It's such a cool game. This iteration of Tux is bulbous and misshapen in appearance, embodying a pear shape. Two years later, Tux Paint was released, featuring Tux as the logo of the game as well as the main character, giving you tips and encouragement as you create your art. Another two years later, in 2004, Super Tux is released with Tux as the main protagonist, tasked with saving his girlfriend Penny from certain doom at the hands of No Lock. This is where it's at. Loving it. Tux the Penguin is going to meet his friend Penny for a picnic, so my boy's already laying down tail. Okay. Okay. He's like, I'm going to lay it down. Sorry, put that shit down. I said, alright baby, what's up with that? So I got them booty jams for you. You better throw that shit back, baby. You see me? Take my example. Come on, throw that shit back. Get down. Tux appears basic and constrained, if not a bit understylized. This could be in part to the game's admittedly limited graphics. In 2007, Super Tux Kart was released, starring Tux along with a whole host of open source mascots. Tux in this game looks garish and cartoony, his eyes are alert and full of vigor. He retains his pear-like shape with a fair few more polygons smoothing his body out. Unique and specialty versions of Tux are created via LUGs, or Linux user groups. A Linux user group is essentially a collection of Linux enthusiasts that convene either physically or electronically in an effort to present their own Linux-based projects and to provide information and assistance to new Linux users. These groups usually operate at a local level, and as such, they create special versions of Tux that are representative of where they're based. For instance, consider this Tux, representing the Jaroslavl Linux user group. He holds two objects with his shrimply little arms, a halberd and what looks to be a piece of cheese. The halberd holds great historical significance, as according to legend, Jaroslav the Wise, a Slavic prince, killed a bear with the very same weapon before founding the city during the 11th century. The city's coat of arms embodies this legend as well, showing a bear holding a halberd. Here's the tux representing the Berlin Linux user group. He is proudly gesturing his flipper towards Berlin on a globe. Very cute. How about this tux juggling peaches? This tux is juggling on behalf of the Atlanta Linux Showcase, an event hosted by the Atlanta Linux enthusiasts, a Linux user group based in Atlanta, Georgia. The peach is actually Georgia's official state fruit. This is also why Georgia's nickname is the Peach State. This tux represents the Sydney Linux user group. The abbreviation of such is slug. Obviously, this tux is par for the course. This tux is the tux here to represent an Argentinian Linux user group. 
he's dressed up like a gaucho, a skilled and nomadic horseman revered as something of a prominent symbol in Argentinian folklore and history, bearing a strong resemblance to the appearance of a cowboy. All in all, Tux has been a symbol not only of Linux, but of computing and technology as a whole. His likeness is not particularly aligned with corporate intentions, and as such, he may appear nonsensical or needlessly cute seemingly antithetical to how a Linux mascot should be perceived. Nonetheless, Tux's playful and inviting look carves a welcoming and eccentric portrayal of Linux and its users. The freedom to do with Tux what you like is also captivating. It allows for enthusiasts and newbies alike to express themselves through his image and draw in a wider crowd. On the outside, the tech world looks cold and impersonal. Corporate logos usually reflect this with sharp edges, geometric shapes, and bright garish colors. Tux manages to break the mold in this sense, as his visage is warm, round, and comforting. His appearance very effectively communicates the communal aspect of Linux, and as such, I would consider Tux an excellent mascot. I hope you enjoyed watching. This has been Tuxology. Don't die tomorrow. Bye.